What's up guys, Andrew here with the Zydax sales team. Today we are reviewing the 7800X3D. This is the newest CPU from AMD, along with being currently the best gaming, uh, gaming CPU you can essentially buy. As far as with the testing, I really wanted to make sure that the CPU was kind of the highlight. So uh, the system that we're testing today is the 7800X3D, 32 gigabytes of DDR5, uh, 6,000 megahertz RAM, and the 7900XTX to keep this an all AMD system. As far as the uh, settings that we went through, I did medium at 1080p. And the reason that I do that is that when you are running tests, if you go up in resolution or settings, you're putting more of the burden on the GPU. If you really want to see what your CPU is capable of, you want to keep the settings lower and you want to keep the resolution lower to make sure that you're actually putting burden on the processor itself. The first game we decided to test was Apex. Obviously, this is still a very popular game, high FPS, which is what these CPUs are designed for. Uh, you can see that at medium settings, we were getting anywhere from 200 to 300 FPS, depending on what was going on at any given time. One thing I did like is that the 1% and the drops didn't feel bad uh, because we we're maintaining high FPS all the time. There's no jittering, um, which obviously can be fairly distracting, especially when you're playing a shooter like this. Now I wanted to mix in some newer games. Atomic Heart is a game that isn't um, honestly as well coded as it could have been, but it was a very fun game. Uh, in the opening scene here, you can see at medium settings, we're getting about 185 to 215 FPS. So once again, because we're putting burden on the CPU and this was more of a CPU bound title, I think this really shows off the new 7800X3D's uh, potential as far as for gamers out there. Uh, game still looks great, but yeah, this is something that you can expect as far as playing a new or titles that this is absolutely going to be able to crush pretty much anything you're going to throw at it. Now, of course, it wouldn't really be one of my benchmarks without running Call of Duty. This is probably still one of the most popular, if not the most popular shooters out there. And uh, with the CPU, we were getting at 1080p medium settings, anywhere from 180 to 200 FPS. Now, you have to remember that this is without uh, technologies like DLSS or FSR turned on. So again, you are gonna be getting better performance at home. Uh, something else that I forgot to mention earlier is that when you do recordings like this, the software tends to cut your FPS by as much as 20 to 30 30 frames per second because you're taking some of the burden onto the GPU. So again, all of the benchmarks that you're seeing right now, your FPS at home is gonna be higher simply because you're not gonna take that hit because you probably won't be recording at the same time. Now, the second most, if not most demanding title that I did test was Cyberpunk. This is a game that is still incredibly hard to run, even with the best hardware out there. At 1080p medium, depending on anything going on in you know, the screen at any given time, you can expect around 100 to maybe as much as 160 frames per second. Um, I was running around kind of just shooting at random people, you know, just testing out the system itself but uh, FPS was at least consistent throughout there. And again, this is without any upscaling technology turned on. And because we are recording this, your FPS will be higher, but about 100 to 160 is what I found. Because games like Fortnite are actually fairly CPU demanding, especially with a bunch of the new updates, this was, I think, a great title to show what the CPU is capable of. At medium settings, which I would basically argue is kind of competitive for this game anyway, at 1080p, you're gonna expect anywhere from a high 200s, like 300 frames, to over 400 frames per second. Even someone like me, who is not great at this game, was able to eke out four kills before I basically uh, bailed out of the game itself. But I was impressed the fact that it turned terms of your actual competitive gameplay for people who have super high refresh rate monitors, this is a CPU that you're gonna wanna get because it's finally able to kind of take full advantage of uh, you know higher end GPUs and we can push these out as well. All right, and by far, I think the hardest game to run, at least with this current suite that I tested, is Tarkov. This is a game that is still incredibly fun, but in still incredibly poorly optimized, and it's very CPU bound. However, at medium settings at 1080p, I was able to get a rock solid 140 to 142 FPS, no matter what was happening. Uh, this is something that, especially in a game like this, is really important because as you're panning around, uh, it's really hard to sometimes see people like in this game. And so not having any jittering or any drops is super important, especially because this is a game where if you see the enemy first, that's basically the only advantage you're gonna have because that's usually what it comes down to. So I was pretty impressed with the overall performance. So there you have it guys. This is currently the most powerful gaming uh, processor on the market. We do have these available for pre-order. So if you wanna go onto our website, you can chat with a sales rep like me. We can help you customize basically the most powerful gaming uh, computer that you want. We will have some ready to roll options coming out as well. And uh, I think that this really has shown that this is going to be a very valuable addition to just kind of your choices when it comes to building a custom computer. Um, make sure to follow us on social media. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, we're all 
over the place TikTok as well. We appreciate all of your follows, and of course, we'll see every single one of you next time.